You're listening to The Fight Game with Tim McCain. And today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Spartaca, lightweight champion of the world, Adrian Soto Perez. Been in 300 fights overall in his career since high school, college, amateur, 5-2 and two as a Spartaca Fight League champion. Should be showcased all around. This is just my opinion, but I'm sure the fans everywhere, they want to see Adrian Soto Perez fight because when he goes on, he puts on a show. Adrian, how you doing today, sir? I'm doing great, brother, and I, I appreciate that. Uh, I appreciate that that incredible uh, intro, man. I appreciate that. But I'm doing great, bro. I, I, you know, I'm uh, frustrated with with the MMA game right now. Uh, but in all, you know, life, I'm blessed, and uh, yeah, I'm just. It's it's great to be back on here talking to you, brother. Absolutely, absolutely. So you put out a quote on Facebook a couple of days ago. And I and, yeah. and I want you to, for the people who don't know, the people who aren't familiar with the local MMA game, you talked about in your tweet, said the best North Carolina fighters barely get an opportunity to fight. Mm. What does that mean? So, you know, it it it's, it goes a, a couple of different ways, you know, mainly two ways. One, just the overall picture, which I'll talk about first is that, you know, for the whole community, MMA community in North Carolina, bro, we have no commission. And this is something mm -hmm. you can attest to that I've been I've been uh, complaining about for over a year now. No. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Over a year now, year and a half. Yeah. And um, nothing's happened about it. You know, it doesn't look like anything's happening. So, you know, so literally they're the best North Carolina fighters aren't getting a chance to fight because there's no commission here. You know, it's not realistic for everybody to go out of town and not, you know, and with the way promoters do things where they want to act like the only way you can get on a card is if, you know, you sell a million tickets, you know, it just puts the North Carolina fighters at a disadvantage because we have no commission and, you know, and the fans are great, bro. The fans is what the fans are, what makes us go and what makes us even be what we are. But, you know, on this regional level of MMA, you know, it's not realistic to ask a lot of uh, a lot of fans to be going out of state, you know, to to see you. You know, if it's South Carolina, yeah, it could work. But, you know, mm -hmm. if you're talking about going past Virginia, Virginia has no commission. I don't believe or they have a commission, but I don't believe their COVID is really strict right now. So, yeah, you're talking true. about going past Virginia, talking about going to Georgia or past Georgia, Tennessee, you know, it just is just it's not super realistic. So, and as for somebody like me who is extremely, when everything is good and dandy in the world, it's extremely tough for me to find a fight anyway. You know, you take into account all this, all these things, it's, it just, you know, it, it's, it's, it's damn near impossible. But on a smaller scale, like me talking, you know, I was really talking about myself on that because, you know, make my, no mistake about it. I believe I'm the best North Carolina prospect in MMA. I just, you know, I've beat around the bush for a long time and, and, but man, I've honed my skills to such a, such a spot now that I just, I'm comfortable saying that, man, there's not a, there's not a better North Carolina po prospect than me. You know, there's guys I've sparred with. There's a lot of tough fighters out here, man. A lot of tough fighters, but sparring is sparring, you know, it, it's, 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 that's all it is. It's nothing more, nothing less. And, and when you really talk about, the talent and skills, you know, I just feel like I'm at the top of the prospects, you know, and it just sucks, man, because I haven't been able to get my chance to fight, you know, um, and I had a stroke of bad luck when I had a real good, tough fight set up in April against a five and one guy out of California, you know, and I was, man, I was training so hard. I was, I, I was training hard. I was in camp and, I was hurting guys in my sparring, man. I was, I was just doing great, man. I was getting, I was getting back in a great shape, and and I, I, I was fully 100% confident that I was gonna, that I was gonna knock this dude out, man. And and I ended up getting injured, and sadly, that was a, the first string of, you know, a substantial amount of injuries that I've taken lately, um, you know. And thank God they've all been minor, you know, like minor injuries that just get better with time, but. Um, you know, so yeah, man. That's that's what I meant by by that quote, though, man. It's sad. It's it truly is sad, man. When I think about it, I think about me being on the show for a year and a half. 
somebody like me, man, that should that should never happen to. Yeah, I, I agree, man. I, I think every time you, you go in the octagon, it's a show. You bring a performance that the fans want to see. Um, but one of the things about the fight that was going to happen, um, like you mentioned, which was going to happen on April 17th, that was going to be your very first pro fight. So are we talking yes, no more amateur fights? We're going pro fights now in the future, correct? 100%. I will not accept another amateur fight. That's uh, That's just plain and simple. Yes, sir. Plain and simple, plain and simple. So, you know, during this whole pandemic, uh, we've had conversations about this. And, and one, I just want to say shout out to Ultimate Battlegrounds, um, Derek Brunson, all those guys. Yes, sir. They, they do a heck of a job. They had a, a great card uh, last fight. Uh, shout out to Elias, Bradley, Conway, <laughs> yeah. all those brothers. Shout you know what I'm boy. saying? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Tommy Kazi, all of them. Yeah, uh, they did, yeah. Shout they did out incredible. To they, did incre- they, they, they put on incredible performances. But somebody who should – there's also somebody that I know that, sh- that should be on that card. Right, you know, I'm right. trying to figure out <laughs> why, this, why, this, why this young man is not on the UBG card because he is what the fans want to see. What are your thoughts on UBG? And they, they need to pick up the phone. Somebody need to call Derek Brunson and get this thing happening. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Derek, Derek, somebody called Derek for me, man. Reach out to Derek. Derek, hit me up, man. God, let me get on there. But no, nah, uh, just, you know, just start with UBG. I'm, man, I'm a big fan. Like, like, yes, I had never been to a card, but I knew that it went on and I didn't really know the thing. You know, I just, you know, this is right. I, I honestly, I thought, OK, you know, it's just regular uh regional MMA show, especially with COVID, because I'm thinking, you know, there might not be fans or whatever. But then I actually pulled up to one. I, I went to one, I believe. What was the last one? UBG seven or eight? It was so the last one I believe was UBG eight. I think you went to UBG seven. Okay. So I went to UBG seven and man that that atmosphere, I mean I had to I had to tip my hat man to to Derek Brunson to uh to just everybody involved, man. To Ultimate Battlegrounds, all the and the fighters, and but the fans were electric, man. Like, like, like the venue and the fans, they were just, bro. They were, they were just electric, and um, yeah. So that was awesome. But in terms of me not being on there, I don't really know what's going on. You know, um, I've had some talks with matchmakers from there. Um, nothing has, you know, nothing has ever come of it. Um. So I don't know. I, I need to get on there, man. I, I, I feel like it's a I feel like it's a waste, honestly. You know, if you don't got, you know, and I and I'm proud, man. I'm 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 happy for all the fighters, bro. I'm I'm happy for all the fighters that have really racked up wins on those cards, uh, that have really showcased themselves. Shout out to James Brown who had a viral yes. knockout, you know what I mean? Yes, shout out um, James Brown. Yeah, shout out to James. Obviously, shout out to to my brother Elias Briley. 17 second TKO in his yes, return. Sir. Shout out Tommy Kuazi. Him and his family are always, man, they always just, you know, you talking about class personified. And uh Tommy is is young man growing yes. into growing into become a great fighter. Um and um uh, I know I'm you know I'm missing some guys, but but Theo Relang. Yeah, what Theo, with him Theo. With well Theo stuff. wasn't Theo wasn't on the last one, but no. but that's why I was just thinking about dudes on the last one. But of course, shout out to Theo, Theo you know really breaking through for us young north carolina dudes getting on the uh on the contender series in the ufc so i'm 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 really happy for all those guys man you know and i just i'm happy and proud of them and i just want my shot you know that i'm not asking for i'm not asking for anything i'm not asking for any kind of favorable treatment man like right like i just want my shot i never asked for an easy fight i never or or nothing like that I just wanted my shot, man. They offered me, they like on the internet, fans went and, and said Adrian Soto Perez versus Nathan Ariega. That's the fight to make. And, you know, and, and I said, yeah, let's go. I'm not scared. Let's do it. You know, and, and Nathan, and, that, and that's all respect to Nathan because he he's a tough fighter, man. He's a rough and tough fighter. He's a power puncher. He's not guys out. I've not guys out. And and he's he's Latino. I'm Latino. And it's not an easy fight, you know, and, and but I, I was like, yeah, let's do it, bro. Like, because that that's 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 what I'm about, man. I believe in myself that much. Um, and anybody that's trained with me or been involved with me in the 
gym, they they know what I'm about, you know. So, you know, I just want my shot, man. So if if it could be on UBG, that would be amazing. If it's on another card, you know, either I, I'm going to take whatever opportunity I get. Absolutely, absolutely. Now we were talking about Virginia and 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 um, the pandemic and and their strict uh, roles when it when it comes to this this fight game. But I want you yeah. to talk about your Spartaca experience, um, your your relationship with 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 Jimmy, but also like you were five and two, you were champion at, at Spartaca. When when yeah. people, and I'm going to sell you, I'm going to sell you a little bit. When 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 Adrian was fighting. For Spartaca, when he was fighting with Spartaca, he was putting on a show. He was doing things. He was knocking out guys. I remember he he did that thing against SpongeBob. <laughs> finished him quick. Shout out to SpongeBob. Great uh, man, yeah. great fighter. He then he then he got a uh, Huggins. Huggins, yeah. Huggins, Huggins was my second title fight. Great fight. That was a great fight. Went back and forth. Um, beautiful fight. Um, that's what the fans my- want to see. Just talk about your experience um, fighting in Virginia. Um, even though you're a North Carolina fighter and all that. Well, I got to – I love you. I love you, Tim. I got to disagree with you on one part. Okay. Me and Huggins, me and Huggins were not back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I pitched a shutout against Huggins. Nothing – and that's nothing against him. You know, he – me and Huggins, man, we talk fairly often, and, and he is a great fighter and um, and a great dude. But that's part of the reason why I got to correct you on that because I'm very proud about that because he's a great fighter. And no one ever dominated him the way I did. Um, and that was my last fight, man. I just was coming into my own, which was a year and a half ago. So it's like, yeah. you know, but but uh, anyway, uh, to answer your question, man, Spartaca, I grew up in Spartaca, man. You know, I, I started in Spartaca as just a guy that was like a wrestler eager to fight. You know, like in my first fight, I was fat. You know, you can see I fought 170. I was freaking fat. and But I was eager, man. And. I was just so I'm I'll forever be thankful and grateful to Spartacus, man, Jimmy Partick, because they throw you into the fire. You know, you yeah. say you like you said, my amateur record five and two. And a lot of people might look at that and think, oh, you know, that's not that great. There's people that have gone five and oh, six and oh, whatever in the amateurs. But I fought the toughest guys, bro. I fought I fought the top guys and and I and I took L's. Like the losses I took, some guys lose and and you just know, okay, they don't got what it takes. Like you know, they get exposed. Any t- the my two losses I lost on the way up when I had to learn. Like like my first loss, I wasn't even training. Like I like my first loss, I I wasn't taking the sport serious. I didn't have a coach. I was coaching myself. Me and my boys were my boys would just hold pads for me. I was cutting weight, just you know like in in a literal weight gym you know and I had no coaching and I lost that fight and I learned so I got in the gym you know I I, I got to, with a real gym I got with a fitness experience and coach Rob Nelson and Elias Bradley and and I learned and then I improved a thousand percent after that I became a champion after that my second loss I lost to Chris McCotty just from just from being just ill prepared you know that was a fight I was actually supposed to fight Joseph Huggins and he dropped out and I end up, you know, these are just lessons learned. I end up accepting a fight against Chris McCotty, who was a two time D1 All-American wrestler. Mm. And for a seven for a six week camp, I didn't wrestle not one time, you know. And so d- d- and there's no excuses. But that's what I'm trying to say. Like my losses were never losses of, oh, he don't got it. They was just things I built and learned on. Never make the same mistake again. And. I just thankful for Spartacus, man. They throw you in the fire, and that is a real pro feeling. You talking about thousand? You been there? You probably talking about a thousand plus fans? Yes, um, thousand Amazing. plus fans out there drinking alcohol, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, throwing stuff. Beautiful yelling, women, cussing, everything. Be- yeah, beautiful women. You know, yelling, cussing, Adrian. Uh, Adrian, you suck. But it's like I love that. <laughs> you know what I mean, like. You know, take take your ass back to North Carolina. Like, thanks, yeah, thanks, buddy. You know, like, but I, I, I honestly love that man. I, I fed off that, and I left that promotion on a streak, an impressive streak, man. Just, just dominating my last last few guys, top level guys, um, just dominating them, man. Making it making it look easy, man. 
Absolutely, absolutely. But shout out, I do want to say shout out to Jimmy Parker. I haven't talked to him in a long time, and uh, I would love to reconnect with him, man. He just, he's just a good dude, and he, uh, he, he gave me a great opportunity. So, yes, thank sir. you, Jimmy. Yes, sir, and thank you for your service, Jimmy. We just have veteran. We just have Memorial Day. Uh, so shout out to Jimmy Partica. Thank you very much for your service, sir. Absolutely. So, I, so, so for the many conversations we've had, um, I've talked to amateur fighters that. Um, that had managers. I've talked to fighters like you who um, were really going out and calling promoters, trying to get fights for yourself. Yeah. What are some of the pros and cons of being a, a fighter who not only is in the octagon, but you're a businessman outside of the octagon? Well, like you said, it has its pros and cons. You know, it's pros. You know, I don't have to. I don't have to let some other guy who may or may, may or may not have ever been a fighter tell me what fights I should or shouldn't take or, you know, try to make me feel bad for maybe not wanting to take a fight or whatever. You know, you can kind of do it on your own schedule. But with that being said, I'm honestly past that point in my career. Um my neck my goal is to get a manager, to get a to to have a manager and uh but I wanted my 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 plan was to to have my first pro fight and then and then and then go from there um, and get a manager after that. But it, it's it's tricky, man. It's a tricky business, man, because promoters you have to let them know that you're serious and let them know that's what you're talking about. Because if not, you know. E- if not, they're going to try to, they, they, you know, they're looking out for themselves. Not, and, and I don't mean it in a bad way. You know, promoters, mm-hmm. they want to make money. That's their goal. It's a business. They, yeah. Just like everybody else in this life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just like everybody else. They want to make money. And, and so if you're just a fighter with no kind of mind about the business, then you can put yourself in a bad position. You know, someone like me, I believe in myself 100,000%. So if they try to put me in a bad position, no matter what kind of position it is, I know that I can fight my way out of it. But being realistic, you know, you don't want to always take the hardest fights or, or the most inconvenient fight for you, you know. Um, and that's where a manager comes in, you know. And, and there's there's a lot of great managers um, in the state. You know, Derek Brunson is a manager. Uh, Lamar Apple is. And, and, you know, those are just guys that come off the top of my head. But, um there, there are great managers in the state, and um, that that's one of my next goals is to to get with a manager so I can hopefully expedite the process. Man, I want to, I want to, I want to get the this show going on the road. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Cannot wait for that. So you put on an Instagram story uh, right before the interview started, <laughs> and you said my next fight will be a boxing match, one hundred percent. I'm just on a different level now. It's that time. Yes, sir. I want you to yes, speak sir. on your confidence when it comes to the boxing game. And you see right there, I got the Canelo Alvarez versus uh, Julio Cena Chavez poster in the back. Hey. Even though we all know what happened with that fight, it was a wash. But shout out, respect to both. It of them. Was. You, you, you know, you know who the, the goat is, especially in this generation. And well, past okay, when, when Floyd Mayweather retired, that's what I'm saying. Okay, but just talk about your. Um, boxing background, what led you to to um, your boxing confidence and all that? So I really started boxing in 2019. Wow. Um, I really started, yeah, yeah, I really started boxing in 2019 when I came to Fitness Experience. I got with Coach uh, Rob Nelson. And uh, excuse me, sorry, I'm going to uh, walk aside so I can, so my phone doesn't die on you. Sorry about that, Tim. No worries. Yeah, sorry about that. I got to put my phone on charge. I don't want my phone to die in the middle of this. Um, so, yeah, I, I really I really started boxing in 2019 uh, when I got with Coach Rob Nelson. He was my first boxing coach ever. And um, I already – I already had – I already had natural talent for it, you know. Um, but he just – he really molded me, you know, my style and a lot, almost all my skills are 
molded from from Coach Rob, you know. Um, but I just taking it to a new level, man. To be honest, you know, I, I've taken, I've, it's come so natural to me, and I've just worked at it and worked at it, and not just physically. Like I tell people, mentally, like boxing is one of the sports the most that mental training. It, this is just in my opinion. In boxing, I believe mental training can get you so far, man, because just watching all the time boxing and mentally just going over the reps and then going in there and doing them and training, you know, because boxing is just hand. It's like, it's just hand. So it's like, you can focus in on things, you know, uh, whereas MMA is more predictable. You know, you can think about things all you want, but you just kind of got to do it, you know, because there's so much coming at you, you know, right. legs, feet, elbows, punches, takedowns, you know, and so, but, but boxing, man, I've just, I've truly just grown, man, in this game. And I've gained the respect of the boxing community here in Fayetteville. Here in, here in Fayetteville, we have a huge, like an amazing boxing community. We have dozens of pro fighters, serious pro fighters. Um, and I just, it, I take a lot of pride in the fact that i've gained the respect of everyone in this in this in in the boxing community here man they they know that i'm serious you know at first me being an mma fighter of course you know you're not going to get that respect but you got to earn that respect in 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 blood and 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 sweat and and you know you got to hurt people you know and that's what i've done man people it doesn't matter what gym now man people people know who i am people know my name people know that that you know, it doesn't matter that I'm an MMA fighter. You know, I'm a I'm a I'm an elite boxer on this level here, and uh, and yeah, man, I'm just I'm just ready, man. I just you know, it was an honor, man. I, I just last week, uh, sorry, two weeks ago, I just sparred my first world title contender. You know, shout out to Lamar Russ, who was who was 18 and three as a pro boxer, who who was in camp with Triple G, was in camp with Canelo, you know, with the uh, Jamal Charlo, like, you know, a guy that was right there on the world title uh, contention, who was, he's about to fight James Kirkland, hopefully. And, you know, we just, I just sparred him for the first time, man. It was, it was an honor, man. And, and for him to tell me, you know, sparring, sparring, I don't talk, we don't talk about what happened to sparring, but for him to just give me that vote of confidence, like, nah, man, like you can do this. You, you, you can do pro boxing. You can switch over. You can do pro boxing, you know, and along with almost everyone else I've come into contact, it just, you know, it lets me know now is the time. And, and that coupled with how long MMA has taken and how yeah. hard it is for me to find a fight. That's 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 my goal now. Is man, I wanna I wanna rack up some pro boxing fights, from, get some wins, and um, and then hopefully I can I can come back to MMA. Yes, sir. You are gonna get titles? You trying to now? I see what what's going on. You are gonna get? You want your plan is to get some titles in boxing and to get some titles in MMA. That's the goal, right? Well, I'm hoping. Look, brother, I'm <laughs> hoping that you know. I'm hoping that I can go get me a good, you know, I can win, knock some guys out in boxing, make some money and, and get my prestige up so that hopefully I'm more, you know, maybe, maybe then promoters would be like, nah, man, I don't care what I got to do. I got to have you on the card, you know? Um, you know, that's what, that's what I'm hoping, man. I'm, you know, and there's nothing against the promoters, man. I don't want to have a bad name with any of them. I mean, and I know it's it's hard, man. They've told a lot of them have told me I've tried to mess you up. Nobody wants to fight you, man. So, you know, nobody locally in North Carolina has wanted to fight me. If somebody wants to fight me, they can comment on this. Whenever you post this, they can comment and say, "No, nah, I want to fight you," and we'll see. But nobody's wanted to do that. So, um, I just, man, I, I I want I want to be great, man. I want my chance, just like all the other guys that have been fighting on like UBG and 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 these other shows, man. I, I want my shot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we're talking about a professional fighter fighting at lightweight, 155. Who are some of the pro fighters who you would be interested in having a match with in the octagon? 155 professional right now. Who are some of those names? Are you talking about like right now or like or like should I get like to the UFC or something like that? 
Right now. Right now. Some of the guys in the uh, yeah. yeah, man, it's true. I don't mind being put on the spot. Uh guys like like Nathan Ariega, who I name dropped earlier, he would be a he would be a great fight for me. Um, you know, tough, powerful dude. He would be Puerto a great Rico fight versus Mexico. Yeah, yeah, we get it on, bro. Like, hey, brown, brown, brown pride, we'll get it on. Yes. Um, I mean, I'll come out victorious, but but you know, it it I, I it would be it would be a great fight. Um I'm trying to think, man. Honestly, man. I, I'll Anybody. Be I'll be honest. I don't even think about these dudes, man. <laughs> like, like, is it, like, because I'm so used to, I'm so used to, like. You're the guys, champion. You're the champion. People, well, people well, need to be calling you up. It's not, it's not, you know, yeah, but it's not even that, bro. It's just, I'm so used to, like, guys turning me down and not wanting to fight me. That it's just, I'm like, I'm like. I don't even be knowing these dudes' names and stuff, but but any of the guys like like Theo Rolaine, you know, he was fighting at 155 and he fought like four or five guys at UBG at 155. Any of those guys, man, anybody, any of the guys that's in UBG that's pro at 155, bro, I'm 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 ready to fight. That that that's just what it is. I don't I don't care who it is. I'm ready to fight. And if they think they can beat me, then let's do it. They can sign because we can sign a contract bro, anytime. Um, and he uh, he can get some especially on. in especially in August especially in August I'm looking August is what I'm looking at if I can get a fight in August man I'll 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 be ready 100. You, no, you gonna I'm, get I'm, I'm boxing for sure but I was I'm, gonna say you you gonna get them some of Mama's cooking <laughs> 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 yeah they been hey hey they sleeping on my mama's son man yeah, my mama's like, son like, and that would, isn't that what he likes to say? They're sleeping on my mama's son. That's right. Yeah, They're talking so, about my mama's son. Um, he yeah, changed any, the game, any, man. Hey, Kwame Brown, bro. He, hey, you know, the internet is such a crazy thing, man. It's such a it's such a, it's such a wild thing to me. It's like a guy who for 20 plus years has people have considered him the running joke, and he never said anything. He never like nope. I never heard Kwame Brown say anything, bro. And then out of nowhere, he just he just sets the internet on fire, bro. Overnight, yeah. and he's a like he now he's looked at as a hero, man. It's awesome. It's it's, it's awesome. Yeah, he changed he changed the game. I was talking about this on Trifecta. Uh, I was like, man, you know what? For me as a sports analyst, like I should have been in sports, but I wasn't into it. Uh, I, I stopped being interested in playing sports around 12 or 13 but for from a person who yeah. was who's never really trained to be a fighter or anything like that i gotta get i gotta go in the gym shout out to major mma uh, i gotta go to the gym over there but man it's it's changing the game i gotta what's gonna what's gotta happen is these sports casters these these reporters reporters like me we have to give the facts we need to you guys are the athletes. We don't need to disrespect people. You know, there, there's there's one thing of like analyzing and, crit and critiquing people. It's another thing is yeah. just personally try to attack someone's character, try to say that someone doesn't have heart. Like there was a reporter that said he didn't have heart. He, he didn't have, he had small hands. He had all these things like these were really personal, um, not about the basketball. These were low blows. And there's something that should not be. Yeah. In in the in in the broadcasting business, in the sports commentating business, we can give our yeah. commentary, but there's got to be it's got to be more critical of the game, not who they are as a person. Yeah, man. When you get to, <clears throat> when you get to calling somebody a scrub or or making up a a name about them, you know you're you're you really you're really crossing the line because. Yeah. <clears throat> Especially when it comes to a fighter, man. Any any athlete, oh, but yeah. but when it comes to a fighter, man, you got to really be careful because because you know the average fighter can beat the crap out of uh, the average dude. You know what I mean? It will actually. I'll take it back. A below average fighter mostly can beat the crap out of somebody who's not trained. So when you're calling somebody a scrub, saying they suck, man, you really you know, it's very disrespectful, man, because people's putting their lives on the line, man. People are putting their health on the line. 
Um, and yeah, man, you're just taking it too far. That's like if a journalist, that's like, you know, Tim, that's like, that's like if somebody, you know, or like me, if I lose a fight and somebody just says, even you being my friend, a good friend of mine, I consider if you write about it and say, yeah, Adrian Soto Perez was, was defeated by unanimous decision and, and um, he was dominated from start to finish, you know, that's what, that's doing your job. That's reporting the facts. But if you were to say, Adrian Soto Perez just, you know, looked like a scrub out there. Like he forgot how to fight from one night to the other, you know, that's just, that's just, that's, that's, that's not right in my opinion. And, and it goes for any, any walk of life, man, you know, people, everybody works well not everybody but but people work hard at what they do man and you know best bit unless you put yourself in those shoes then absolutely yeah. absolutely and i think whether it's whether it's uh, a journalist a reporter the media or or the fans fans have always you know when people say what about the fans fans have always been crazy there was somebody that went into wasn't there a mike tyson fight where somebody went into the ring like like th these things these yeah. things happen I just think what, what needs to happen is there needs to be some sort of respect. Um, I was listening to the Joe Rogan podcast one time, and I think it was Cowboy Cerrone. It was just this dude just talking smack, want to fight Donald Cerrone. Like, you, what are you, what are you thinking? You're going to get, you're going to, you He's want out of smoke? his mind, bro. He's, yeah. He's, he's smoking something. Yeah, you got it. He's out of his mind, man. People. <sighs> You know, those are those, I call them couch warriors, you know, the guys that order the pay-per-view, drink yep. three or four, four beers, and then they're like, they're like, oh, man, I could take them, man. If I would freaking, if it was me, I'd freaking do this. I'd freaking elbow his eyes out, you know. It's just, you know. One punch, and you're out. But, That's what's happening. One punch, <laughs> and you're out. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. Nope, you getting tapped. You yeah. out. You on the floor. Straight to the head right here, you out. Yeah. So look, that I just gotta say is put put respect to the athletes. I don't believe in, in in worshiping athletes because at the end of the day we're all people. But I do believe that you if you have somebody who is been training their whole life to do this, okay, it's one thing to be critical, it's another thing to try to, to disparage them. And so that's that's my last thing about Kwame Brown. Um, but Adrian, yeah. I really appreciate uh, you uh, taking your time, explaining everything, explaining your journey. Um, wish nothing for, but the best for you, brother. Thanks, brother. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate you uh, giving me the platform to vent, man. That's what I feel like. Feel like I've been sitting here with my therapist, you know, my psychiatrist. You gave me, <laughs> you know, shout out to my psychiatrist. Oh uh, yeah, I'm like Ron Artest. You, you remember that? Yeah, I don't know if you watched basketball run our test after he won yep. the title. He said, "Shout out to my psychiatrist." <laughs> nah, um, but I, I, <laughs> I appreciate it, brother. Thank you for the opportunity, man. And uh, I'm hoping that this uh, interview can get out there, and man, I can, I can get me a freaking fight, brother. So yes. thank you. Let's make this fight happen, people. Let's make it happen. Yes, All sir, right, brother. Much love. Thank you.